In today's video, I want to very simply explain the point of staking in cryptocurrency projects, how people actually make passive income staking, why you can potentially be risking some of your crypto when you stake, and also how does staking make a blockchain network more secure? So first things first, let's start with what a layer one blockchain is. So there are certain cryptocurrency projects that are the base layer of a main blockchain that developers can build on. This is where transactions are processed. This is where these blocks that you keep hearing about are created. And this is where consensus occurs. Remember, in order to create these blocks, it has to be very accurate information. And so there's all these consensus mechanisms that occur in the background of these cryptocurrency projects that go ahead and make sure that the blocks are created accurately and that everyone is holding an accurate ledger. This is how security of the blockchain is enforced. Now, one of the problems with these layer one solutions and big Bitcoin is a layer one solution, Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche, Polkadot, Binance Smart Chain, these are all layer one solutions. However, if you've watched some of my other educational content, you know that one of the main problems that crypto has is scalability. The actual projects are not always scalable, like Bitcoin, that can handle just a few transactions per second. So in order to make it more scalable, there are layer two solutions that are devised, such as Lightning for Bitcoin. And by the way, Bitcoin uses a proof of work consensus mechanism. This is the classical way that these tokens and coins were mined. This is where computers solve very, very advanced mathematical algorithmic problems and whichever computer or ASIC solves it first gets rewarded for it. This is proof of work. The problem is this is very energy intensive. And so to solve this issue, a much more energy efficient consensus mechanism was devised that is considered a lot more environmentally friendly, and that is proof of stake. And proof of stake relies on stakers to be validators and verified transactions. When you hear of validators, when you hear of running nodes, that's just individuals that are participating in the blockchain network and actively making sure that the transactions are valid and the blocks can be built. So how exactly do they partake? Well, they actually have to take a certain amount of tokens or coins that are the native cryptocurrencies behind these crypto projects, and they actually lock them up as collateral. Now, why the heck would people lock up their crypto? This sounds absolutely crazy. If you go ahead and let's say lock up Ethereum, and then all of a sudden Ethereum starts tanking, you can't just easily take it out. It's not very liquid because you locked it up. The reason is, is that stakers earn rewards. So when you put up, let's say in Ethereum's case, if you want to participate the classical way, if you want to participate and you want to actually validate transactions, you have to put up 32 ETH as collateral. Yes, that's a lot of money. Not all projects are that expensive to be able to go ahead and participate, but you actually put it up as collateral. Now, what do I mean by collateral? Well, you lock those up in a smart contract for certain other projects. It's actually a wallet. And what this does is it ensures passive income to you so long as you're following the rules and being an honest participant trying to help the network. Most individuals partake in order to make this passive income, in order to make a profit on the side. Some do it because they believe in crypto and they really want to help out and they are an honest individual and they want to make sure that they're participating in the network. Some are invested in the network and want to make sure that it doesn't go belly up. And the more honest people that are participating, that are validating transactions, the more decentralized the network is and the more of a likelihood that it is 
very, very secure. Because remember, if you only have a few people validating things and you only have a couple of nodes, it's very easy for malicious individuals with deep pockets to create a 51% attack. And maybe more than half of the individuals that are validating these transactions, maybe they go ahead and they destroy the project by giving inaccurate information. Here's the thing though, when you lock up this crypto as collateral in order to go ahead and partake in the consensus mechanism of the actual project and validate transactions. If you are being malicious, if you're being a bad actor, then you actually risk getting some or even all of that crypto taken away from you. So first of all, if you're inactive, because it does take some know-how and some technological savviness and knowledge to go ahead and run a node to participate. You have to make sure you're online. You have to make sure that everything is set up correctly. If you're inactive, if you're an unreachable node, you can potentially have a small penalty to the crypto that you've locked up, that you've staked. Now, also, if you go ahead and you purposefully try to be malicious, then for instance, in Ethereum's case, there's something called slashing where you actually get heavily penalized as far as a lot of this crypto or ETH in this case that you have staked. I also want to point out that staking is sometimes referred to as something else when it comes to DeFi, decentralized finance. There's also yield farming. There's liquidity staking. There's governance staking. That is when you have a say in what happens with the project. And I actually wish that in the crypto community, they would come up with different terms for these different types of staking because crypto is confusing enough. And if you're new to the space, it even makes it a little bit more complicated. Now, I want to discuss something and talk about staking in real life as you may have experienced it and explain a few things to you that you may not have known. So if you've ever bought Cardano on a crypto exchange like Coinbase, you may notice that the native cryptocurrency ADA that you've purchased is actually considered staked. So you're staking ADA, but you also might be confused because I just told you that when you stake a crypto, you have the ability to actively participate in securing the network and validating transactions, but you're not doing anything, right? You're not running no nodes. You're not validating anything. You have just purchased a crypto on Coinbase and it's considered staked. So what the heck is going on? Well, basically you're depositing your ADA in the exchanges staking program. So the actual exchange Coinbase in this example, is pooling all of the tokens that were staked and then it delegates them to professional validators. The beautiful thing is the validator does all of the work of actually validating and securing the network. You're doing absolutely nothing. So if you're not securing the blockchain, why the heck are you getting some sort of reward? Well, basically the staking rewards are shared with you because the exchange takes a small cut. Why does the exchange take a small cut? Because it's actually doing a lot of the work. It is handling choosing the validators. It is managing all of the nodes. It is distributing the rewards. And this is why you get a percentage. You're definitely not getting the actual reward that you would get if you were doing all of this yourself. But the beautiful thing is you don't need to worry about the smart contracts or setting up a wallet or running a validator node or monitoring the uptime. And why is this great? Because it's passive income. Now, obviously the downside is you have to keep an eye on different lockup periods when you are doing this with different cryptocurrency projects, because in some you actually have to lock up your crypto in a smart contract and you really can't take it out up until a certain period of time. And then, like I mentioned before, what happens if that project tanks, then you're stuck just watching a bunch of red candles and you can't pull out your money. In the case of ADA, I believe it's only in the first like 20 days that you can't take it out. But then after you can unstake your ADA, your Cardano on Coinbase, I'm just mentioning that because that was the example I was using for this video, you can unstake it and then you can actually withdraw funds. But also keep an eye on how long it takes when you go ahead and unstake something, when are you actually going to be receiving those funds? It's important to understand that fully before engaging in staking. I also want to point out, 
you will probably see a figure that says APY and it will be a certain percent. And what is APY? That's the annual percentage yield. So when you're staking, you get the rewards like I mentioned, but how much is the reward? That's usually calculated with a metric called APY. So if Coinbase promises you 4% APY on your staking of Cardano, it means that if you put in $1,000 over a period of a year, you're going to make $50 profit. Now, this compounds in the sense that the next year, if you keep everything staked, you're not just going to make another $50, you're going to make 5% of $1,000. $50, which will be a little bit more than $50. So hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm here to learn with the rest of you. So mention any questions you have. Nothing is too silly. Mention it in the comment section and let's actually work through it. If you want to ask an advanced question, go ahead. If I don't know it off the top of my head, I'll do a bit of research and get back to you because this channel is still relatively small. So I will try to respond to every single question that comes through. I hope you appreciate there's no sponsor there's no affiliate links there's no stupid discord channels i want you to join and i'm definitely not trying to sell you on some sort of course with that being said i appreciate all of you for watching this video in its entirety and hopefully i'll see some of you in the next video